Hello, motherfuckers, and welcome. Except we're doing Ren today, and Ren is Welsh, so perhaps I should say Croeso. Croeso? I think that's how you say it in Welsh. A special Croeso, as always, to anybody who is trans like me or has ADHD like me. And all the neurodivergent queer people out there who don't fit into the big scary world. Um, but, you know, welcome to everybody because, because love is not cake. Uh, so, whew, we're doing the big one today. We're doing high Ren. I'm going to have a go at this fucking masterpiece. So I'm a little bit daunted. Seriously, I could talk for three days solid on this video. Uh, I'll try and condense it down into something more manageable for you. Uh, so, without further ado, don't know what a do is. What is a do? But we don't want any more of it. Uh, and I'll just get started on the, the video. And uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, already, I, I love the guy in the pig mask. I love this guy. Who is this guy? When he walks out the room, he's got this this whole little swagger going on, hasn't he? As if he's about to say, "Fucking come on, then." I don't know who he is, but I like him. Anyway, we haven't even had any musical noises yet, so I better just continue. interesting point is it's only slightly interesting but it is interesting he is playing a classical guitar right now mostly when you see a pop musician pop rock musician playing an acoustic guitar it's not a classical guitar it's a steel strung guitar what's the difference i hear you cry well uh, a classical guitar has, has nylon strings plastic strings basically and uh this gives it a very, uh, a very mellow sound, a very smooth sound. Whereas uh, um, typically a, a rock pop singer will use a steel strung acoustic where, where the strings are made of metal and that has a much, much brighter sound. Um, go to anyone you like. I'll give you uh, Ed Sheeran as an example. Here he is playing uh, a steel strung acoustic guitar, just so you can see the, the, the sound difference. Notes how bright and edgy this is darling i will be loving you till we're 70. baby my heart you hear that real bright noise it makes and ren's guitar does not make that sound because it's nylon so yeah a little bit unusual and he plays in a very classical style i don't know Ren does not strike me as the, the kind of person who, who went to lessons. He, he has the air of somebody who teaches himself stuff. And yet, he plays kind of like somebody who's trained. This is a very sort of classical guitar technique. Uh, interesting. I will have to do more research on that. Let's um, carry on. Other thing to point out is he really plucks the strings hard, really fucking hard, and that's quite unusual too. I mean, a, a classical guitar is usually the guitar one is very gentle with, you know, it's usually for playing classical music, but he's attacking that fucker. It's very aggressive, I really like it.
first time I heard him do that, it, it was, in my defence, it was the first time I'd ever seen him, and I, I, I didn't, didn't know. Okay, I didn't know, but I thought when he went up for that high note the second time, um, and and he does this, this kind of uh, semitone thing at the, at the top there, and I thought, ah, yeah. He's he's missed that note a bit. He's, he's he's trying to do this, and he's accidentally done. Uh, and and you know, fair enough because singing really high in a staccato fashion is is, is very difficult. So you know, I didn't mind, but but uh, <laughs> I I thought maybe he he wasn't as good a singer as as I later discovered he was. My bad. Uh, because what you find at the end of the song is when he repeats the sequence is he does that exact same thing again and that's when I knew, ah, okay, this guy knows what he's doing, doesn't he? And I underestimated him. Foolish, foolish me, so early into High Ren and I had underestimated him. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> Hi there, Ran. It's been a little while. Did you miss me? You thought you buried me, didn't you? Risky. Cause I always come back. Deep down, you know that. Deep down, you know I'm always in periphery. Ran, on your pleased to see me. It's been weeks since we spoke, bro. I know you need me. You're the sheep, I'm the shepherd. Not your place to lead me. Not your place to be biting off the hand that feeds me. Hi, Ran. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself since my therapist told me I'm ill. And I've been making some progress lately. And I've learned some new coping skills So I haven't really needed you much, man I think we need to just step back and chill Okay, so This is a um, As you all know, as everybody knows This is a, an argument he's having with his own uh, Negativity Okay, and as he says a bit later in the song uh, This is not This is not a new idea Eminem did it Plan B did it Um and it's not just them either. Um, I, uh, I I found this this interesting little one by uh, Megadeth, and, and this is quite interesting because it's uh, the the scenario, the whole setup is is very Ren, but the music is completely different. Just watch a few seconds of this; it's quite interesting. Hello, me. Meet the real me and my misfits' way of life. Dark black past is my most valued possession. Hindsight is always 2020. But looking back, it's still a bit fuzzy. I speak of mutually assured destruction. Nice story. So uh, that's a very Ren scenario with the, the, the grotty room and the mirror and everything. And then, but. That it's not always done like this because his um his Dodi Dodi Clark, brilliant singer songwriter, and this song is uh she this is also a battle with the with the subconscious but in this case it's her depression uh, in conversation with her happiness so she is uh, representing the depression and Thomas Sanders on the on the right is her happiness so although there are two singers performing this song it's still uh her battling with herself just hear a few seconds it's beautiful would you mind staying it's getting late but i will visit you soon so, so just, just try, try to get, get through and don't try to fight it you're here for the night and I'll be waiting for you until we meet again. So lovely, 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 Dodie. So yeah, it's not it's not a new genre as such, uh, even though it's not very often done and it's not always done very well. Ren obviously has done the definitive battle with the subconscious now. This is the one by which all the others will be measured forever. Let's have some more. 
Ran, you sound more insane than I do. You think that those doctors are really there to guide you? You've been through this a million times. Your civilian mind is so perfect to always be lied to. Okay, take another pill, boy. Drown yourself in the sound of white noise. Follow this ten step program, rejoice. All your problems will be gone. Fucking dumb boy. Nah, mate. This time is different, man. Trust me. I feel like things might be falling in place. And my music's been kind of doing bits too. Like I actually might do something great. And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered for doing something special with myself. That's why I don't think that we should talk, man. Because when you're with me, it never seems to help. See, th this is the, the beautiful irony of this video. He's talking about wanting to be remembered for doing something great. And this is the video in which he is doing something so great that it will always be remembered. And that is a beautiful irony, I feel. If only he could have known as he was sitting in that little wheelchair how this was going to fucking kick off. Uh, so yeah, I, I love that. It's almost um, a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I, I am we, we are one. Split in two, that makes one, so you see. You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me. I'm not left over dinner. Possibly his greatest verse ever. I don't know. But it's fucking brilliant, isn't it? I'm not scraps on the side. Oh, your music is thriving. Delusional guy. Where's your top ten hit? Where's your interview with Oprah? Where are your Grammys, Ren? Nowhere. Yeah, but my music's not commercial like that. I never chase numbers, statistics or stats. I never write hooks for the radio. They never even play me. So why would I concern myself with that? But my music is really connected. And the people who find it respect it. And for me, that's enough, because this life's been tough, so it gives me a purpose I can rest in. Man, you sound so pretentious. Ran, your music is so self-centered. No one wants to hear another song about how much you hate yourself. Trust, Trust me. me. You should be so lucky. Having me inside you to guide you, remind you to manage expectations, provide you perspective. That thing you neglect it, I get it. You want to be a big deal. Next Jimi Hendrix, forget it. Man, it's not like... It's an interesting line, then. You want to be a big deal the next Jimi Hendrix. You see, I my, my impression is everybody knows who Jimi Hendrix is, but I don't think everybody fully understands just how big the impact of Jimi Hendrix was um, and how completely transformative he was to, to pop and rock music, more rock music, I guess. Look, I want you to just imagine it's uh, it's 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 the early sixties, okay. This is what lead guitar sounded like in the early sixties, okay. This is electric lead guitar in a pop rock band. This is what it sounded like. <laughs> Hank Marvin there with the shadows. Look, I'm not a. Uh, uh, what's that noise? Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not knocking that at all. I love it. I love a bit of early '60s twangy '60s guitar. I'm, I'm sure I've used it in songs. So it's great. But that, if you're around in the in the early '60s, that is your idea of electric lead guitar. So I want you to imagine what it's like when you see this for the first time. <laughs> world has changed <laughs> nothing nothing was the same after this so somebody could watch that now and think well yeah i mean it's great it's just a it's a rock guitar solo isn't it you know i've heard a million rock guitar solos but you have to understand that nobody had heard this before this was this was new this was new and and it changed everything and and the reason it, it, he his influence is so massive is that Every 
pop and rock band in the world had a lead guitarist. So if he influences all the lead guitarists in the world, or almost all of them, then, then there's a massive transformation to the rock and pop music scene. Now, I don't think Hendrix is, is actually a very good comparator for, for um, Wren, because uh, the, the thing Wren does is, is very much, it's much more niche. It's, it's very much his thing. It's his own thing. And it's not like hundreds of thousands of rock and pop bands in the world are suddenly going to do tracks like High Wren. That that's just not going to happen, but um, but you you can't just measure somebody's brilliance on their influence or, or how extensive their influence is. You have to measure it on the genius of, of the particular thing they're doing, and, and we all know that High Wren is a absolute masterpiece. So let's go back. That. Man, it's just like that, I'm inside you, you twat No, it's not, man, you're wrong, when I write, I belong Let me break the fourth wall by acknowledging this song Ren sits down, has a stroke of genius He wants to write a song that was not done previous A battle with the subconscious, Eminem did it Played on guitar, Plan B did it Man, you're not original, you criminal rip off artist The pinnacle of your success is stealing other people's material Ren, mate, we've heard it all before Oh, she sells seashells on the seashore Fuck you Yeah, see, this is, um Speaking as an artist myself, this is uh, this is quite affecting, really. This this constant battle with the feeling that you're just copying people or just ripping people off. That you're that there's nothing original in what you do. It's a it's a terrible insecurity, but and really most of the time it's unfounded. You see, the thing is, there is very little that is genuinely new in music ever like take high ren um ren is not the first person to play a classical guitar obviously he's not the first person to rap he's not as we've already seen the first person to do a battle with the subconscious type song so all these elements have already existed and and when you're when you're creating something and you're looking at all the elements of the thing you're creating and you think, well, I just got that from them and I, I got that from that person. Oh, I'm, I'm really not doing anything new, am I here? This is nothing. There's nothing special about this. I'm just ripping off other people. But, but that's that's not that's not what's going on. You see, what what does create something new in music is the combination of the things you learn from other people. So Ren has brought together a, a bunch of elements here that have all existed previously in other artists, but the way he has brought it together in his way is what creates this unique piece of art. So it, it, it's a great irony that he's created something unique out of things that already existed, which are not unique, if you know what I mean. But that, that's, always, that's always the way. With art, we are all standing on the shoulders of other artists. And I'll have some more to say on that in, in a bit, but let's have, some, let's have some more. I don't need you, I don't need to hear this. Cause I'm fine by myself, I'm a genius. And I will be great, and I will make waves, and I'll shake up the whole world beneath us. That's right, speak your truth, your fucking god complex leaks out of you. It's refreshing to ask for you, say it, instead of downplay it. Uh, music is all about the creative process and if people can find something to relate to within that then that's just a bonus it is Fuck true you. i'm gonna fucking kill you ren i'm fucking kill me then let's fucking have you ren i'm gonna do it once we prove it who are you to doubt my music because i call the shots i choose if you die yeah i call the shots and so i choose who survives i'll tie you up in knots when i lock you inside <sighs> news flash i was created at the dawn of creation i am temptation I am the snake in Eden. I am the reason for treason. Beheading all kings. I am sin with no rhyme or reason. Son of the morning, Lucifer, Antichrist, father of lies. Mustopheles, truth in the blender, deceitful pretender, the banished avenger, the righteous surrender. When standing in front of my solar eclipse, my name is stitched to your lips. So you see, I won't bow to the will of a mortal. Feeble and normal, you wanna kill me? I'm eternal and mortal. I live in every decision that catalyzes chaos that causes division. I live inside death, the beginning of hell. I am you, you are me, I am you, friend. Oh, 
Oof. That's the bit that always um, gets to me. And it's not even the lyrics, because, you know, it's not like I relate to Mistopheles. <laughs> but it's just so well done. It's so brilliant. And I find it very, very moving to watch something so utterly brilliant. Let's continue. Let's see if I can get through this without fucking crying. Hi, Ren. I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself and I've spent half my life ill. But just as sure as the tide starts turning, just as sure as the night has dawned, just as sure as the rain falls, soon runs dry when you stand in an eye of a storm. I was made to be tested and twisted. I was made to be broken and beat. I was made by his hand, it's all part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet. And you know me, my will is eternal. And you know me, you've met me before. Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east and I'll settle on the ocean floor. And I go by many names also. Some people know me as hope. Some people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. God, it's so good. It's just so good, isn't it? I, it's such a beautiful line. Uh, the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. Because he's talking about the noose we put around our own necks. And when we loosen that noose, give ourselves a fucking break. The voice we then hear in our own heads is our own positivity at last. Ah, it's a beautiful line. Beautiful. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Because I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch or shake. So cower at the man I've become when I sing from the top of my lungs that I won't retire. I'll stand in your fire, inspire that me to be strong. And when I am gone, I will rise in the music that I left behind. Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you, we're a coin to different side. And when I am gone, I will rise in the music that I left behind. This is that. Here we return to that beautiful irony. Because this is here to stay long after Ren is gone and we're all gone, people will still watch this. Hmm. But that's not what I wanted to say here. The, the thing that struck me about this, this section, when, as soon as he sang it, remember this was the first time I'd ever heard Ren, as soon as he sang it I thought, this guy listens to reggae. This, this is a very, very Jamaican way of singing. This is there's something, I can't even, don't even know how to describe it exactly, but there's something about the... the this way of singing, this this tone of voice, this rhythmic pattern, which is very, very reggae. I grew up with reggae. I know that's weird because I'm white and English, but but I did. It's a long story, but I, I'll explain it one day. But I recognise this, recognise this immediately as, as, as a reggae sound. And it reminded me mostly of... Um, uh, an old uh, time reggae singer, well, actually, actually I think he's still going, called Barrington Levy. Let me just play you a little excerpt and you can see if you, if you agree with me. Here, listen to this. That's Barrington Levy. Such a lovely voice. But do you hear how how that is very similar to to uh, that sound that Ren has here in this? Be strong, and when I am gone, I will rise in the music that I left behind. Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you, we're a to different side. The thing that convinced me the most, though, was was when I started to explore Ren's stuff in more detail. And of course, I, I finally I found, and and I found this. 
And that is uh, a riff from uh, Barrington Levy. So this is this is the kind of thing that you end up being very insecure about. Somebody can easily say, well, Wren's just ripped off Barrington Levy there, hasn't he? He's just fucking stolen that line from that, that little bit from Barrington Levy, trying to pass it off as his own. No, this is not what's going on here at all. For a start, the Barrington Levy track has 44 million views, right? So it's not like it's not like some secret little thing that you could nick and nobody will notice. Uh, so that's, that's not that's not what's going on here. This goes back to the thing I was saying earlier about how how all artists um, stand on the on the on the shoulders of other artists. And um, see this this idea of 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 taking up somebody else's riff and doing something with it. This goes back even to classical music. This, this idea of variations on a theme by. Right, so you, you could have, for instance, Beethoven writing variations on a theme by Mozart. I'm not sure if that ever actually happened, but it has happened between various composers or a composer will take a, a theme from a, a folk tune and, and think, ah, oh, I love this tune. I can think of loads of things I can do with that, all kinds of interesting orchestrations and, and, and modulations and messing around with the melody. So Wren has... Uh, has heard this Barrington Levy thing and absolutely loved it uh, and and that has inspired him to go off in a whole different direction with his piece. This is how music works, how we're all inspired by each other and how we bring these elements together to create our new unique thing which is just us but is made of everyone else. It's not beautiful, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful beautiful thing i think i think the thing is that some uh some musicians are like uh, some artists are like mirrors they're like magic mirrors in which you see a part of yourself that you didn't see before so it's not so much copying as finding something within yourself through them I, I'll give you an example from my my own life. OK, so I've always liked rap, but I've never fully understood really how it works. It's kind of not my genre. You know, I, I, I really like to listen to it, but I don't really know what they're doing because uh, there's a relationship between the, the rhythm of the words and the beats that is kind of it's kind of loose and it moves in certain ways and I don't really know what the principles are so I never really considered it was something I could even try and that was fine but then Wren came along and Wren has a particular way of rapping and as soon as I heard it I thought he's drumming he is drumming with words now I'm uh, a drummer. That's that. That was my first instrument, and I understood this immediately. And ping, I thought, I can do this. I can do well. I can't do it like Ren does it, obviously. Who can? But I suddenly realised that I understood rapping as as it is done by Ren, and that allowed me to to try it myself which could never have happened before so Ren was the mirror in which I saw a possibility in myself that I, I didn't realize was there he was the, a magic mirror for me look let me just play you this short this short little snippet okay so I as, as soon as I'd as soon as I'd heard him uh, do that I, I had a little uh, 
little gap in a song that needed filling and it was a song about having to get things out of your system by talking and I thought this is exactly the place to put a really short little wrapped sequence let me try it and see what happens I wrote the thing in fucking three minutes flat and, and just went and did it let me let me show you what I came up with I can't even get out my words I can't even make myself heard I can't even spit out the hurt or the bitterness Stuck in my throat till it burns I'm eating myself from inside Holding piranhas inside Feeding the memory Negative thing I have ever devised I'm puking them out to survive Right now speaking Venting, ranting, putting Every fucking feeling beside me I won't give them control So, look, it doesn't matter if you think that's utter shite. But the point is, I really enjoyed doing it, and I could not have done it until I'd seen Ren do it. And he allowed me to understand rap in a new way that would work for me. And that is exactly what's going on with this, this thing of, of Ren using the line murderer from... Uh, Barrington Levy and and um, but it also explains the constant insecurity where where I'll be thinking to myself oh fucking now now I'm rapping just because I'm into Ren oh, that's pathetic you know the, these kind of conversations you have with yourself and that he's referring to earlier with Eminem Plan B and stuff so there is your little insight into the troubled life of an artist <laughs> let's go note he sings there it's really high that is an f5 that's really high most men will really struggle to hit that note uh, so that's interesting When I was 17 years old, I shouted out into an empty room, into a blank canvas that I would defeat the forces of evil. And for the next 10 years of my life, I suffered the consequences with autoimmunity, illness, and psychosis. As I got older, I realized there were no real winners and there were no real losers in psychological warfare, but there were victims and there were students it wasn't David versus Goliath. It was a pendulum, eternally swaying from the dark to the light. And the more intensely that the light shone, the darker the shadow it cast. It was never really a battle for me to win. It was an eternal dance. And like a dance, the more rigid I became, the harder it got. The more I cursed my clumsy footsteps, the more I struggled. So I got older and I learned to relax and I learned to soften and that dance got easy. It is this eternal dance that separates human beings from angels, from demons, from gods. And I must not forget, we must not forget that we are human beings. genius you know the um that uh that little monologue at the end uh strikes a particular chord with me and i'm going to say this because it may be useful to some other people out there i used to suffer really badly badly with panic attacks and if you're wondering what a panic attack is like a bad one imagine the fear you would feel if you were in a in a in an airplane 
and the airplane broke up in midair. So imagine that level of fear, but then imagine that level of fear just hitting you randomly for no apparent reason, just as you're walking down the street or sitting at home watching the television. That is a panic attack. And it incapacitated me for quite a while. I couldn't go out. I, I became quite agoraphobic and and yeah, it was it was a bad time. But one of the things that got me out of it and helped me learn how to live with it, control it, was uh, something I read in a book which explained that panic feeds on your resistance to it. So you start to feel the fear and as soon as you feel the fear you try to resist it and you think no, 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 no. And, and it feeds off that resistance and it grows and grows and you're in a spiral. You're in a spiral which takes you right to the very peak of the most intense fear that your body can actually produce. And the advice was to, to go with it to actually go for it. Go ahead, panic. Give it your biggest panic you've ever had in your life. And what happens is, so you, then you feel the fear again and you're thinking, oh no, 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 no. And you're thinking, go with it, go with it. Really panic. And, and, and then you think, right, okay, I'm gonna panic. I'm gonna panic really hard, like, Whoa. and it just goes, it just disappears. You're giving it nothing to feed on. It's like one of those monsters, like a like an entity in Star Trek. You know when there's an entity and they fire their phasers into it and it becomes stronger because it feeds off the energy of the phasers. Uh, it's, it's like one of those things. So I, I don't know, maybe that will be useful to somebody out there. But anyway, that was High Ren. An absolute fucking masterpiece. You know, if you're into... Uh, if you're into high Ren, um, there's another artist you should check out, um, K Tempest. Uh, they they do something in a similar vein to Ren sometimes. Uh, let me uh, play you a little excerpt and you'll see what I mean. Check this out. Clive is close to her now, one hand on her shoulder, the other is opening his flies while well, she can feel her fury rise. She stares straight into his eyes, now he couldn't meet her gaze but she would not look away. That's when she reached behind her head, she pulled a bottle from his place, she swung that bottle in his face. But he just grinned when it hit him, although he bled like something bit him. So she swings again, the bottle smashes, then she sticks that bottle in him. But he is almost laughing. The blood's bubbling at his temples, but he keeps grasping. His eyes are rolling, his breath is rasping. Fuck it. She grabs another bottle. She swings them both. But now he's throttling her throat and he's pulled her to the floor. And he's above her so close she feels smothered. But she... I'll stop it there. Don't want to give you any spoilers. But yeah, you see, you see how it's in a similar, it's in a similar world to, to Ren. So I'll, I'll put a link below. You can check that out if you want to see it. In the meantime, thank you for listening to me talk for God knows how long this has been going on. But thank you anyway. And thank you anyone who said something nice about me in the last video. Thank you very much. So yeah, be kind to somebody and uh, stop fucking bombing Gaza and I'll see you soon.